Hi everyone, Dr. David Cullough here with Synergy Wellness in New York City. We have a middle-aged man here. Uh, we won't mention any names here, but um, he came in um, with numbness in his feet, numbness in his hands, and we're on, I don't know, maybe the sixth treatment, right? So, um, but we also did a foot scan and found that he had flat feet. And that's causing a lot of these problems. When you're flat footed, you automatically rotate your knee in because your medial arch drops. So when you rotate that knee in, that can cause some wear and tear on the knees. You having any knee pain? Sometimes, not today. Okay, so he gets knee pain from time to time. And that was also another indicator while you stand a lot or while you're walking or waiting online or, you know, if you get knee pain, hip or back pain, or of course, foot pain on the bottom of your foot, on the arch or in the heel, uh, which he has, it's called plantar fasciitis. So he has really tender feet down here. And uh, like I said, we scanned his feet. We're gonna get him fitted for a pair of orthotics today. And we're going to go ahead and adjust him, take some pressure off the nerves in the lower back and in the neck, because that's what's causing the numbness and tingling in his legs. The tingling or paresthesia in the legs is coming from his lower back. The tingling in the arms and hands is coming from up here, the neck and the brachial plexus region. So um, without calling you by your first name, let's have you uh, lay on this side. Do you have a uh, mask you want to cover yourself up with? I'm going to scoot you forward here, okay? Pick you up. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, take a deep breath in and blow out and relax here. Good. And the other side up. So, right before this, we did a little cox flexion distraction technique to open up the uh, space where the nerve exits from the spine. And that helps take pressure off the nerves that are causing numbness and tingling in his feet and toes. So after we did that, now we're putting him on his side and adjusting him here to correct the pelvic misalignment. That's very noticeable. And the pelvis will, will get a lot of help once we get him the orthotics uh, in his shoes. Relax here. Let it go, let it go. Good. And on your stomach. So if you have foot pain or arch pain, when you stand or first thing when you get up in the morning, it's called plantar fasciitis. You 99% have either a heel spur, which is much less common and uh, 99% of those people have plantar fasciitis. The 1% might have that uh, heel spur. So, uh, and either way, if it's a heel spur or plantar fasciitis, orthotics are the only thing. And he had asked me, does he need surgery? No, nobody should ever get surgery for plantar fasciitis. There's a lot of treatments that are effective for that. Um, we're gonna loosen up the bottom of his foot and then get him orthotics, but if his plantar fasciitis continues, there are some other treatments we can do like cold laser therapy. So we're gonna do that today for him. We're gonna do a little cold laser therapy session on his plantar fasciitis in the heel area. Take a deep breath in. Good, and blow all the way out. Relax your legs and feet. Good. Okay. So I'm going to use a thousand hertz just to calm the muscle spasms and inflammation down and uh, help with some of the pain. So where is most of your pain? Is it in here? Yeah. One side worse than the other? Uh, it's not the same. Okay. So this is the attachment, right? Sort of in the medial front part of your heel is the attachment where the plantar fascia attaches on and then it's a thin fascia that spreads across the foot and the toes. And again, when your feet are flat, it stretches that uh, sheath 
and makes it uh, more sensitive and inflamed and it can be very uncomfortable. It's hard to walk sometimes. So, and I've, I've seen people with plantar fasciitis for months. Um, how long have you had it, Alec? I had it for about, the pain probably for the last eight months. Almost every day for eight months. So I've seen cases two, three, four years even. Don't let this get worse. Get some orthotics if it continues. And don't, don't go over the counter and get some, you know, Dr. Scholl's. The, there's a reason why they're over the counter. Uh, they correct only the medial arch. They don't even consider the lateral or the transverse arch. So you have three arches in your feet. So it's really important to get um, someone who knows what they're doing, can run a scan, or somebody that has a foot levelers machine that can run a scan on the feet with a laser. And they'll be able to detect the exact height of the arches and they'll be able to compare those arches from left to right side and then fit you with a custom pair of orthotics so you're not gonna have any problems. So it'll fix the arches, excuse me, the arch support and the arches over time, it'll fix the problem and you won't have plantar fasciitis. Some people are so inflamed though, they need a little laser therapy for a couple treatments before um, you know, the pain goes away and orthotics in severe cases sometimes isn't enough in the beginning. So we're doing a laser session here for him. How are you doing so far? Okay. Now you should just, you won't feel anything. You should just feel that they're looser and you should feel less pain under the heel when you walk out of here, okay? And when you order the orthotics, they'll take about a week to come in, and then we have you break them in. And that can take some people a few days, some people take a week, or in the worst case, we've seen like two weeks to break them in, okay? And usually, if your plantar fasciitis is really bad, you're gonna be more on the longer, you know, two week break in period. I don't think your plantar fasciitis is too bad, is it? Been better the last few weeks? Uh, it's better today than last week. Better today than last week. Okay, so he's got his ups and downs. Were you on your feet a lot last week? Yes. Okay. All right. A lot of people think I do this on every patient. Yeah, not on every patient, but a lot because. But the difference is I'm doing it in different areas for each patient with different rotational forces. So it may look like it's the same adjustment for everybody. It's not. It's not a cookie cutter adjustment or anything like that. Okay. Go ahead. Tuck your chin down. Take a deep breath in. Come on up. Yep. And blow all the way out. Good. And relax your head back. Good. Good. Now the brachial plexus is at the base of the neck. And those nerves run down the arms and hands and control the sensation in the fingers. But it doesn't always have to be a brachial plexus injury. It could be a carpal tunnel syndrome in the wrist. So the nerve can get pinched in the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, but I've already checked all of that on him. And there are ways you could do further tests like an EMG or a nerve conduction test. And if things don't improve even more, he's already improving, but if they don't improve more, uh, we may do an EMG test on him and relax here. Good. Okay. okay, you're all set. Thanks for tubing in.